Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Cavern Tavern is one of those games where you roll the dice and you allocate them as if they're workers based on the numerical value on the dice. We've seen this in Kingsburg before, right? That's the big game that does this. Maybe even Alien Frontiers to some extent. But Cavern Tavern is going to play a lot more like Kingsburg with a twist. What you're going to do is you're going to roll the dice and you're going to be getting ingredients to fulfill orders that people are wanting. Based on how long it takes you to fulfill those orders, you will generate victory points. So the longer it takes you, or the more turns that it takes you to accomplish the order, the less victory points you will get to a point. If it takes you too long, you will get negative points. So the idea here is, you know, where Kingsburg is more like you can spread your stuff out, get some stuff that's good for you here and there, and you want to accomplish this, that, or the other. With this one, you have a very specific idea of what you're trying to do fulfill an order and that right there may be what brings this game down a little bit is the fact that you really must concentrate only on those ingredients that you need otherwise you can quickly fall behind but there are other ways to score victory points so the one through six space gives you all of the ingredients so one gives you an option of two ingredients two gives you an option of two ingredients but you can fulfill all of them with that. So theoretically, with perfect rolls, you could fulfill each and every order by only sticking to the one through six. Yet, the other spaces from seven to 18 will also either give you bonuses, victory points, or interesting things to do, like trade with other players, or even steal some of their goods. So, the downside to using those more expensive places is, quite frankly, they require more dice. That's fine, and that's interesting. It's a decision. Do I want to score these victory points here or there? And you kind of have to do some mental gymnastics, I guess, very lightly, to figure out what is the best move for you. But sometimes, because there isn't a whole lot of ways to manipulate the dice, you're kind of stuck with what you roll. This is what you have. How can I maximize my points by scoring these points? And sometimes those things are going to become rather obvious. Um, I don't need any of those extra ingredients that dice are going to give me. And I can take them and just get the ingredients. That's fine. But they may be completely worthless to me unless I find other orders that need or require those goods, which may hamstring me down the line of like, okay, if I have these things, now I'm, I have to get this order or... Even this one will score me more points, I need to go down this path because I don't have enough actions left. I don't know if I'm going to get the right dice rolls. So this game really does come down to, a lot of times, did I roll co correctly? And that's not necessarily what you want in a game. You don't want, did I roll dice better than you? Did my decision score more points for me? Now, i played this game roughly about 10 times so far, and I feel like that I'm starting to branch out from that. So when I first started playing, uh, I just wanted to get those orders done. But I'm not so sure any longer that's where the maximum amount of my points are going to come from. Maybe I would do better doing other things or just having to punt and do something else which will score me points. To further complicate things, there are some spaces on the board that I kind of can screw you over. There's a nasty track. If you get down far enough, you have to draw a nasty card, which will do bad things to you. So I can push myself up on that list while pushing you down. That only requires a dice, and that can be a good way to just kind of throw a dice away, if you will. The other thing I can do is I can spend two or three dice to get these item cards that will break the rules. The problem with that is I don't know if they're going to break the rules in the way that I need them to break the rules right now. So, even though they can do something cool and powerful, is it going to help me? And because the cost is two or three dice, that's a lot in this game. That's a lot of dice. It may not seem like a lot of dice. I mean, any given turn, you might have four or five dice. But that's a lot for a turn for something that may help me just a little bit, but could help me a little bit more. So, 
you kind of have this push and pull rub. Now, if you spin the three dice, you not only get the item card, you get a magic potion, which is a wild card ingredient, but only one ingredient. That's not a whole lot, even though it is a wild card and can kind of save you in a pinch. I don't know if you're going to win the game taking that spot too often. Maybe. I just don't see it. So I feel like the strategies of the game is pushing you down <coughs> really one path, fulfilling the orders. That's the game. The problem with that is, to fulfill the orders, I have to rule correctly. <coughs> if I rule correctly, I'm going to do better in the game. I'm not sure you can roll poorly in this game and win. Now, you may say, well, that's obvious. That's how these games are. Maybe. I didn't always feel that way in Kingsburg. I felt like there were enough dice rolls that it was going to spread itself out. With this one, I didn't know there was enough dice rolling. There's only, there's, I think there's only a finite number. It'd be 12 rounds of the game. I only won the dice 12 times. And I need really specific rolls to fulfill what I need to do. Hmm. So, I'm going to put that aside because that's where this game um, kind of, where this game kind of is. On the other side, when I take certain actions, I can move down these tracks which is, could be one strategy, move down these tracks quickly, and that will give you bonuses, either manipulating the dice or uh, victory points. I find it very hard to get down that track to the dice manipulation part. I've only seen it a few times. Maybe after 20 plays, I'll be like, oh wow, that's the strategy to go. Get down that line and start manipulating dice. I feel like it'd be very helpful. I just feel like it's really hard to get down there, especially on one track. You would really need to center on one track from early on in the game and say, I'm going down this path and maybe get some help with the orders because some of the orders will let you move down a path. But that's luck again. I feel like there's a tremendous amount of luck in this game. I feel like there is a lot of luck and you need things to kind of roll your way, pun intended. You need things to fall your way. But you also need to focus and that's where the game comes in. You need to focus on what you're trying to accomplish and I like that. That's good. That brings me to good decisions. Now, it may seem like I don't like this game. No, I really like this game. If I play a game 10 to 20 times, I really like it. This is a game that's going to stay in my collection. This is a beautiful production. I love the artwork. I like the layout of the board. I like the layout of the player mats, which are double-sided for your preference. Uh, I like the game. I like the decisions I'm making in the game. I like getting screwed by the dice in this game. Whoa, I do. I like that. It's fun. It's fun to kind of make do with what I got. I just wish the orders weren't so important because that's where your big points are going to come from. But I feel like, listen to me, I feel like the more I play it, the less I'm starting to think that's true. And the more I'm like, oh, well, maybe there's another path to victory. Now, if somebody was able to roll the dice, fill every single order on the first try, the big money ones, and things just worked out for them, they're going to win. But you don't play these dice rolling games. You know, you kind of think over over the length of the game, the averages will play out, and you kind of have to go with that. Sure, I think it's, you know, perfect rolls for somebody. They're going to smash you through the mouth. But that's very, 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 very unlikely, especially, you know, rolling the dice 12 times. I just think it's unlikely. And then the happen happenstance of them just getting what they needed. You know, sure, possible, but highly improbable, right? Um, I like the screwage of the nasty cards. I like... Um, the hard decisions on whether to get a new order, when you get that new order. A lot of times I notice people kind of, if they fulfill an order, they wait for the next round to get one because you don't want to go down that nasty track, which can be killer because it's negative points and there's nasty cards. Um, one minor quibble is that when you go down a nasty card, it's, I think, 3, 9, and 12, you get a nasty card. And if you hit the 3 and get the card... Um, if you move back up to two and then back down to three, you don't get a nasty card, which is great because then that prohibits you from wanting to go up. Uh, but there's no way to track that. You just kind of have to remember that, uh, which is a little component. We usually just try to grab something and put it in there. The game comes with a couple of variants. It comes with an expansion in the box, at least the Kickstarter version. The Kickstarter components are beautiful. I love the artwork on this game. It's really neat and uh, great looking. I like the top of the board where it looks like you're actually in a pub. Brilliant. Um, I don't know what the non-Kickstarter version comes with, or if there is a non-Kickstarter, but I would get the edition I have. The box is great. It's got a nice organizer in it. The, comp the tracker for points looks like a mug that they would have. I just really like the components of this game. Highly recommend it. Now, I, wanna, I do want to deal with one issue here, okay? So, 
Kingsburg is the standard. And a lot of times when you see an upgrade of a game, you know, five years later or whatever, you would expect that game to improve upon it. I don't feel like this is a better game than Kingsburg. I feel like Kingsburg is the better game only because of the pressure of the order system. But that's this game. You can't take that out. That That is what this game is. That's fine. Maybe you like that order system better than I do. But I prefer Kingsburg. I feel like it's a cleaner production. With that said, it's much better than other dice allocation games I've played. I've reviewed Ancient Terrible Things. This is much better. So, you know, this is really high up there on the Kingsburg st uh, standard. Just a little bit lower to me. I like it. Now, do you have room in your collection for this? Yes. I feel like this is a good game to add to your collection. If you've never heard of Cavern Tavern, check it out. Play it. It's very, very good. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it, and I highly recommend it, and it's a keeper. So here are the components for Cavern Tavern. I should point out that I do have the Kickstarter version. I don't know what is different. If I do, I'll point it out as we go. So the front of it is the Cavern Tavern, a secret of the five realms. You do have a pretty weird, so this is a mug, and it's it's a guy's reflection off of it. You can kind of see what's going on in the bar. Uh, let's see what we have. We have the rules of conduct. I actually like this rule book quite a bit. Um, the organization's a little odd, but once you get the hang of it, it's really good and a lot of good pictures. It's one of those kind of big square ones. You're going to have a clock. You don't spin it, I promise. It's just a round keeper. That's all that is. You will have a number of goodies that you will have to pop out there. Now this is part of the expansion that comes with it. Very thick, very nice. Each of the player boards will be double-sided. These are pretty thin, but that's okay because they just kind of, you know, sit on the board. I prefer this side because it has where all your cards go, but this side is very much more thematic, if you will. And there's enough to play four players. Sorry, there's enough to play six players. Okay, and the box has a nice little organizer inside. But let's take a look and see what everything is here. So you're going to get a four-sided or fold-out board here. You ever played Kingsburg? This is kind of like that. So up here is where you're going to have the sitting area. We're going to be serving people. The, just back here is your kitchen or what they call the cellar. This will be uh, where you fix the food. This will be where you clean up and some miscellaneous things that you'll be doing up there as you work for Mr. Nasty. The game will come with these fairly awesome dice. I like them. They roll really good. They're big and clunky. They have the numbers on them. I really don't have any problems with these dice at all. They roll really well. Each person is going to get a meeple. Once again, this might be a Kickstarter only, but they do have some really neat little stickers on them. I don't know if that matters to anybody, but I do like stuff like that. You have a pitcher that will be your points that you'll be taking throughout the game. And you have a cylinder that will be used on the clock. So this will be used like that. Signify when you take something. You will have a number of little tokens that will be used throughout. These are pretty, this is for the expansion and they are Pretty thick with some pictures on them and stuff. So they look fairly nice. So let's take a look at the cards. The cards are fairly good. This tells you uh, the goods and what and their ratios in the game. Then you will have the Mr. Nasty cards, which is really nasty. And you will have a number of these. These are bad. You don't want these to happen. Um, but you can kind of see the artwork is there of Mr. Nasty. And what it says. And these are these feel really good in the hand. I really like the finish on these. These will be the orders. And you can tell you get a ton of orders in this game. Um, they won't be shuffled too much just at the beginning of the game. And they feel really good in the hand. Then you will have your item cards. And these will just be fun little things you can get. You can see the artwork is really fun. This is really what you need to have down there, which is the small, it's not small font. Even though it looks small, it's not, but it does only take up like a tenth of the card for the information that you're actually, actually using. Um, these are used in the solo play. So you, this does have ability to play solo. Then you will have some characters. These are optional rules that you can play with. 
which give you powers and there's a green side and a red side so you have two uses of the power and then you flip it over and then it's gone so you can only use those powers a number of times these will be end of game scoring you'll get one at the beginning of the game uh, the artwork's okay it just kind of tells you what you need to be scoring for the components are really really good in this one I really don't have any complaints um, which is normal some of these are for the solo game but then these will be the resources you'll be getting. So there's no like wooden resources. You get these cards. And I almost wish there was just a tracker on your board. But the cards work fine. They're the miniature size. Everything fits back into the box very easily and has a place for it, which is uh, wonderful. I feel like the components are really good. I don't really have any problems with them. Everything. This is their Kickstarter thing where everything looks good and plays good. The rules for the game are very clear. One of the cool things about this game is, I really think if you're a gamer, and most of us are, if you're watching this video, um, you can almost figure out how to play this game by just staring at the board. I bet you if I put this board in front of a gamer, they could figure out the rules of this game, 95% of it. I really, really do. Uh, and it's, it doesn't even have like, it doesn't even have like the round on it, like written down. You do this to that. It's not on there. It's just number. You know, it's just the thematic of it, uh, the artwork on the board. I just think you can figure this out. You roll the dice and you place dice down and you get stuff. That's the game, right? So I think the rules are really good. There's a few rules you got to go to the rule book for, like you know, you only get one card on that nasty track for each number, maximum of three per game. They're just like the little tidbitty things, but. Most of the game, I mean, you can just look at the game board, there, and there's no words that has the round on it, and you can figure this game out. It's very intuitive from the components and the look of the game. Brilliant, you know. And this is a that that right there brings an abstract game. Like you're just rolling dice and getting stuff, and brings it into me because it's so intuitive how it works. Great job uh, by the designer of this game. The easiest way to explain this game is to start with the orders. So on your turn, if you don't have an, if it's the beginning of a round, you don't have an open order, you must take an order, or you can take an order if you don't already have one. You can only ever have one order at a time. Let's say you go here and you're gonna serve this person. This person gives you 21 points if you do it in one turn, in the same turn you take it. If you, it takes you one additional turn, you have 15 points, all the way down if you take six turns to do it, then you get negative 21 points. So you want to get these done as quickly as possible. The way you track that is by this clock. So each round, the turn, the time will end, or turn, right? So when you take an order, let's say it was 1020, you took the order. At the end of the round, this will move and your tracker will not. So we know that's been one round that you took it. So we know how many victory points you would score if you finish it. Now, each order is going to tell you what you need to fulfill it. Fruit, syrup, nectar, wine, beer, and liquor. You would need to have one of all of those in order to do that. For this dwarf, who's only worth 15 points, you would need herbs, rocks, nectar, elixir, and ambrosia. Now, the way you get that stuff is that on your turn, everybody will roll the dice. And this will be the dice that you have for the turn. A four, three, and a one. Each spot on the board will have a number. Let's see if I can zoom in on that just a tad. So, if I wanted to place my die here, if you see it's 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So there's more spots available the more players you have. If I was to place my 1 here, I could take a fruit or an herb very easily. Mead or nectar if I went here, and a wine or elixir. Now, if I'm looking at this and I put my 1 down, maybe I'd want to get a fruit. And do I need mead or nectar? Nectar. So I put my 3 down. And wine or elixir. I need wines. Maybe I grab that. But then I have this three left over. I could get another meter nectar because there's a spot available if I wanted to. I don't need it right now. And I don't know what card I'm going to have in the future. So maybe that's not what I want to do. Now, down here at the bottom, there's seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, and 17. And then up this side, you're going to see 10, 8, 14, 12, 18, and 16. But these are obviously cost more dice, what do they give you? Well, on your player sheet, you're gonna have three tracks. The nasty track, which I'll come back to. You're gonna have preparation of food and sweeping and cleaning. So you're gonna be moving your little, your little trackers down every time you take one of these spots. Every time you take a cleaning spot, one of these spots over here, you will move your tracker down 
until you get to these bonuses. I'll get to those in a second. If you take one of the f preparation of food, you'll move your tracker down for each one you take until you get in the bonuses. So what do the bonuses do? If I'm on the spot and I take a food spot, I would get two victory points. And here it gets three plus or minus one to my dice to up to a four. So these can be very valuable to go down one of these tracks. Some of these spots will do additional things. So like this one out of seven gives you first player and two victory points. This one gives you syrup and three victory points. This one over here for 15 gets you a beer. You can trade with somebody and they have to do it. Exchange and six victory points. Uh, mead for 17 lets you go down the tracker, seven victory points, and steal something from somebody. So, so these that cost more will allow you to do little things. Um, plus give you the victory points let you move down the tracks. Uh, so that can be very, very helpful. Then up here you have a place where uh, every round that you don't have, uh, where you have an open order where you did not fulfill it, you'll go down the nasty track, okay? And if you get down here, now you can only hit this, even if you hit this, get the card and go back up, you can only get the number three card one time. So the max, you'll get three cards in the game, okay? You could spend a die, go up here, move yourself down on the nasty track, I mean, sorry, up, and move somebody else down. So that can be a pretty nasty spot to do to somebody. You can spend three dice and get a magic potion, which is equivalent to a wild card of any good, and you would get an item card. So you're gonna have these item cards you can get that will help you break the rules of the game. Let me show you a few of them. Uh, set aside the white die, nobody can use it in this round, and you gain it next round, so you can get an extra die. Move down two spaces on your chores track. Take the first player marker. For the rest of this round, holding a nasty says card does not prevent you from placing dice on any spaces. Choose an ingredient. Player holding cards the ingredient must give you one card. So these will just break the rules. This one, you pay one die, you can get rid of an, one of the orders up there and exchange it with something that might be more preferential to you. Or this one, you put two dice down and you get an item card of your choice. So that can be very, very good. So this one appears three and you get an item card and you get the magic potion, it's, it's a wild card. This one's two, but you only get the item card. So you'll be placing your dice and, and getting a little bit of goodies. And then when you can fulfill one of these on your turn, you score the points and you put this on your board. You just flip it over that it's been done. And then you're eligible to take another order. And this is how the main way you're gonna score points in the game. So it's fairly easy, you ever played Kingsburg or any game like that where he's kind of rolling the dice, using those dice to activate different spots on the boards to get goodies and move down tracks. Inevitably, you're just trying to fulfill these orders of the people that you're waiting the tables for. And that is Cavern Tavern. Who should buy this game? I'm going to recommend this for most gamers. I really like this game. This is a really fun game. And one I find myself bringing out over and over and over again. Can you play this with non-gamers? Yes. I, I think you can. There's a little bit of complication to it. But I think just rolling the dice and putting the numbers down and collecting the orders, I think they're going to be able to pick that up. This is an easier game to play than Monopoly. It really is. Now, you know, they don't like games and they're negative about games. and They're like, aha, board games, you know, for the board. You know, the, maybe not. But, you know, if they can figure out Monopoly, they can figure this game out, okay? Um... I also think, now if you have Kingsburg in your collection, do you need this game? Yes, it plays different than Kingsburg, even though it uses the same mechanism. It's like saying I can only have one worker placement in my uh, game in my collection. Or I can only have one auction game. If you're that guy who only has one of each mechanism, buy Kingsburg. Um, but if you're like me and you like having three or four options, like I don't want to play Agricola every time, I, maybe even Converta. Or I want to play, you know... Uh, Coal Baron, or just some other worker placement game, The Pursuit of Happiness. I don't want to have just one. This is great. There isn't a lot of great dice allocation games. Off the top of my head, Kingsburg, Alien Frontiers, and Cavern Tavern. That's the gold standard to me right now, uh, those three games. So I would stick in, I mean, off the top of my head. I, I feel like I'm missing one, but I think that's it. Highly recommend this game. Because it was only a Kickstarter, I believe, I think that's right, um, then I would say check this one out, seek it out, go with the Kickstarter version if possible, the components are really good. I don't know if there's another version, I'm assuming there always is like a deluxe version or not. If not, the components for this is fantastic. 
Um, check this one out. Do not let this one go by. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. I know I start off with a little bit of negativity about the order system because it just kind of bugs me a little bit. But I wanted to, I wanted to combat that by saying with more plays, I've learned there's different strategies to combat that. And I, that's brilliant. I like that. I really, really like that. Because at first I was kind of like, Ugh! and then I was like, let me try some wonky things here. Get out of my normal board game thinking. By watching other players do it and myself, I was happy with those results. So I highly recommend this one. This one is one that may have snuck underneath your radar. Check it out. Cavern Tavern Keeper. If you like this video, please like it. It really helps me out. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos from me and see some of those games that aren't just always the new hotness or our top tens, please subscribe to the channel. That's a big barometer that we're doing the right thing. If you played Cavern Tavern or are thinking about playing it, comment below. That really helps out. I like to interact and talk to you about the game. And if you have any questions about the game, please comment below. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. And have a great day.